Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Mandy. I'm showing you colors. Um, I've done blooms in this color before, um, but I was trying to use up some paint. And I this is Dark Waters. This is a prison pour color. I was out of Nebula Star, which is what I used with this color combo before, so I looked for a, like a similar shade. That was Cupid's Crush. This is Tempted Tulip. And I already showed you Interference Violet and Southern Ocean Blue by Matisse. I'll list the colors in the description box. But I had already made a mess and I had some paints out that I needed to use. So I decided to try to just do a quick bloom and see if I could use up some of that paint. So this is a little 10 incher. And so this should be just a really quickie bloom. Um, I'm using white pillow paint. It's probably PPG Multi Pro from Home Depot in satin finish. And it's a little bit thicker than normal because it's been decanted for a while. Um, so yeah, these colors are honestly so beautiful together. Um, so even though I have other videos where I did use them, I've also used them on coasters. I think what made me decide to look for a comparable color to Nebula Star is I have two coasters and I'm thinking of completing the set and doing two more, but I ran out of Nebula Star and I don't want to mix up more because the object is to use up paint, not mix up more paint. So I've been trying to find a similar color to use. So Dark Waters is lighter, but it works. So Southern Ocean Blue by Matisse is a beautiful color. It is a semi-transparent color. Interference Violet from Color Art. Um, there are discount codes in my description box. So 20% off of Color Art using Mandy1120. There's also 10% off of Pixel Paint Designs, which is where I get my Australian Flow Troll using Mandy uh, 10 in all caps. So this is the Dark Waters. Dark Waters is a prism pour color. Um, if you're not familiar with color art, prism pour is an acrylic paint. It's very sparkly and beautiful. That paint was a little thick, so I put a little more Josonia in it. Um, but by doing that, I'm going to introduce bubbles. So a good rule of thumb, if you're, if you know, you're going to paint, mix up your colors, make sure they're the right viscosity and all that, and let them sit for a couple hours. So the bubbles will pop, but I don't always have that kind of foresight. So, um, I have a little bit of time to paint. I just have to deal with bubbles. So this is Cupid's crush. This is a primary element um, from color art but this is part of the glitz line which have a little bit more opacity um, tempted tulip is also part of the glitz line so these are going to be a little bit more color fast than a typical primary element um, because they're not going to be quite as transparent so they're a lot of fun to use a little bit um, I guess that's I used white oh. Is that white or interference violet? I, I can't honestly tell. It must be white. No, I don't know. Who knows? It's been a minute. So I'm going to use a white cell activator. And um, so I'm using Australian Floetrol, of course. And I'm going to use M. Graham Titanium White paint, which I get from Blick. Any of my not like any um, non-color art paints that I get for the most part, I get from Blick. So I have a link below. I also buy canvases and that kind of stuff there. Um, it, it's one of the best online art stores and it's very reasonably priced. You're welcome to use our link. You can shop through our link. You don't get any special discounts, but it does help our channel. And um, that's where I buy my, like my Matisse paints, Atelier, that kind of stuff. Um, so Amsterdam, all of those. So the, my paint was thick, so this was a difficult blow. Again, when you're using up old paint, there's some challenges there. Um, so the goal is obviously to kind of let your breath catch that middle cell activator puddle 
And then once you catch it, pull your head back to widen the reach of your breath. Um, easier said than done when the paint's too thick because it starts to collapse back in. So this was a very difficult blow. Um, it just, you don't realize how difficult it's going to be till you start doing it and you're like, oh my gosh, um, the paint's thick. Sorry if you can hear my dog. There must be somebody outside. So I'm using a turkey baster to break up the what's left in the middle. You can see that there's a part that I didn't blow out very well. All right, so I'm popping some bubbles that I created by using, you know, thick paint. And um, then we're going to spin it out. Again, the blow is difficult, so we don't have the best coverage. As much as I've done blooms for years already, I still struggle with my blow. I will get better at it, but it's part of the journey, so we embrace it. But the little pop of interference violet in this really is a nice touch. So I recorded it even though I've done a, a bloom in this color because I wanted to be able to kind of compare the results using the dark waters instead of nebula star and I think it worked. Um, see how my, I don't know if you guys have been listening to my rambling in the last couple of videos, but you see how my spinner is throwing my design more to one side than the other. It's so annoying. So I keep moving it to help shift the weight of the paint to the other side. But it's super annoying because you have like this one bald spot. And I'm like, come on. So you can tell now that it's blown out where we don't have as good lacing and cells toward the edges. And that's because... The paint was so thick, we just couldn't get good coverage there. Also, those weird fingerling looking petals that look like really long, I don't know, something, tongues, <laughs> paint tongues. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. That's because my breath was too narrow. So one of the things I have learned that I do is I think I purse my lips too much when I blow and I need to... I need to practice being cognizant of relaxing them so that my uh, the scope of my breath is wider. It's amazing how technical blooming can be sometimes. And there's, it's also strange that we do some of that stuff so subconsciously. Like, you know, I'm not playing the trumpet. Relax a little. Let it, let your breath open up, you know. But... That's, that's why we practice. But um, this one, because of all these stupid bubbles you see me popping, it dried with some of those little annoying white pinholes. So what I do to fix that is I go get a pointy brush, like a very narrow brush, and I dip it in a similar color, and I just dot those dots. Um, and under resin, it looks fine. But still annoying to have to take that step, you know. So unfortunately, we pop what we can see and hope for the best. So this is not a perfect blowout, but the colors are beautiful. So I thought it was still worth sharing. And uh, it's also part of the learning process, right? You know, I can look back and see the progress along the way. I think it's still worth keeping. You'll have to let me know what you think. Um, but the colors are just really beautiful together. Really quite magical the way those colors work together they also work well on a black pillow with a black cell activator the only thing is the blue doesn't show as much because of the black and the blue is a transparent color so it ends up kind of just looking like red and pink but one of the prettiest little wood rounds I remember doing a long time ago was this combo on a black pillow and the colors just pop. Okay, so here's a close-up. Beautiful colors. 
not amazing composition, but beautiful. The center is beautiful. All those weird blocks of color are because of the way I blew it out, but I still think it's really pretty. So thanks for watching my, my little practice and using up paint. The colors are really spectacular. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everyone.